Well, hello there. I'm Tom Scott. Uh, as, uh, as Herb mentioned, I'm from the University of York, although believe me today, I am most definitely not representing them. In the next eight minutes, uh, just like Hans Rosling, I have some graphs for you. To start off with, this is Twitter. This is the times per day you post to Twitter versus the amount I could give. As you can see, <laughs> as soon as you pass one tweet a day, I couldn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> Uh, and once you pass two a day, I couldn't give a monkeys. Uh, the pink line there, the little dotted pink line, that's an exception. Uh, that's if I'm trying to get into your pants. <laughs> this is the percentage of people that understand the difference between bar charts and line charts. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, because that should really be a pie graph. <laughs> this is the number of audiences I've shown this chart to. That's the number of audiences who've laughed at it. That's close enough. <laughs> this is a pantomime. <laughs> this is the time I intend to go to bed versus the time I actually go to bed. The blue line, the blue line is normal. The red line is if I have an internet connection. <laughs> this is how awesome Hans Zimmer theme tunes are. Hans Zimmer is a very, very famous film composer. He's, he's been composing for years and years. First of all, Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, not only is that a fantastic bit of music, it's now become shorthand for pirates. You play that music and everyone knows what you're talking about. That's quite awesome. Number two, Gladiator. Now, not only does that bring a tear to the eye of grown men at the end of the movie, it, the whole score, that whole score redefined film music ever since that came out. That's even more awesome. The last Hans Zimmer theme tune. And you think I'm joking, you think I've just put that in for a laugh, but there it is! Music by Hans Zimmer, believe it or not. Can you imagine, can you imagine what would have happened if Hans Zimmer had been in a different mood when he'd composed the theme music for Going for Gold? The whole show takes on this epic battle between nations fail. <laughs> and then suddenly, Henry Kelly walks on. That's brilliant. But that's not quite as awesome as if Hans Zimmer had been in a different mood when he composed the theme music for Gladiator. <laughs> now let's welcome your host, Henry Kelly. I think we can all agree that that's significantly more awesome than either of those. This is how much the DJ talks versus how much I want them to die. The red line is me, the blue line is Morrissey. <laughs> Two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. Yes, da -dum -tsh, exactly right. You see, you'd think that, but then we actually went and tested it. You ready? It's Matt, a friend of mine. Ready! What's black and white and red all over? Badger in a blender. Wait for it. Yes! <laughs> this is how long I spend on an idea versus the chance of it succeeding. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> I, spent, I spent hours and hours putting together a really complicated video about Apple inventing a heads-up display. Nothing. I spend one, two hours putting together a website that recovers deleted Twitter messages from anyone's account. Goes everywhere. Fantastic. Gapminder. Gapminder. Hans, Hans Rosling's Gapminder is an amazing thing. Um, he's, you can chart so many things on it. What I've done here, uh, as you all know what's happening tomorrow, this is the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> as you can see, what we have here is 1957, the dates at the bottom left. Those red countries, they're the Western countries, they're the traditional Eurovision countries. And as time goes on, that's on the x-axis, we've got the number of entries they've got. The, the y-axis there, the y-axis is the five-year rolling average of their score. Took me hours to put this together. Right, 1994, look at that. See all those on the left, the blue and the greens. They're all the old Balkan states and the Soviet, and the Soviet states are all broken apart. And they've come into Eurovision in 1994. But look, on the right, all the red countries, they're still all over the place. There's no, still no pattern there other than they've been there longer. But watch, the late 90s to the early 2000s, televoting appears. Televoting appears in the Eurovision Song Contest. And watch those red dots on the right. Down they go! Down they go! <laughs> not, only, not only do we have block voting, there's the United Kingdom, 2007. Look back here. If I can grab that little thing there. 
Look at this, in, 1980, in the 1980s, we're right at the top. That's Katrina and the waves happening there. The only, the only one higher than us, the only one higher than us is Ireland, just about here. There they are. At that point, the Irish broadcast was pretty much bankrupt. But watch this. Down we go. <laughs> Down we go. Televoting came in. And I can't think of anything we could have done around 2002 that could have affected our standing on the world stage as much as that. You know, <laughs> what else could possibly have that effect? This is people who are red, green, colour blind. <laughs> as we can see from this graph, everyone who is red, green, colour blind is a normal, productive member of society. This is how long I've got left until I'm unemployed. It's not a joke, I just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> this is Connolly's law. Connolly's law. As time goes on, if you leave a man in a room alone with a tea cosy, <laughs> the probability that he will wear it on his head approaches one. I have some evidence of this. I have some evidence. This is Richard. This is a friend of mine. I left him in a room with a tea cosy and a hidden camera. As you can see, at one minute, he has noticed the tea cosy. But at five minutes, he's still staring ahead. He's not going for it. Then all of a sudden, seven minutes, bam! There it is! There it is! And by eight minutes, by eight minutes, he is raising the roof and performing papal blessings. It's amazing. This, uh... Sorry, what's that? This is the last one, this is the final one. On the x-axis is the amount of effort, on the y-axis is the amount of awesome. If it's in the red zone, you do it. If it's in the blue zone, you don't do it. That's not a joke, it's just a way to live your life. Thank you very much, I've been Tom Scott. Good night!